John here guys and today we're doing the full review build up and flight footage of the Source 5. That's right the Source 5. This is the fifth iteration of Team Black Sheep's open source um, <laughs> frame line and this puts that box frame idea into fruition into practice at an extremely low 26.99 price point and this is how it sits so before i go any further there are a series of additional braces that you can buy for i believe 13 bucks and if you are going to be racing i probably do recommend doing that that actually replaces these little motor insert feet thingy and adds an additional piece of carbon going up on the top here and down below here and that will really reinforce um, the entirety of this build if i did that i would probably just run those at the front uh, for that front impact but this actually did surprise me i took this out to a fun fly track day and put some laps on it that's right we were social distance racing we were setting ourselves apart we didn't create an event on multi gp because we wanted to be able to keep the numbers small enough for everybody to stay safe so sorry if you missed out but it was a great fun day now my thinking going into this was that this thing was going to crumble that these braces were going to crash because when you hold them in your hands when it's not assembled it feels kind of like an uncooked flat noodle like just ready to snap but when you assemble it and everything is in place and you have the additional reinforcement and rigidity of the assembled product it actually pleasantly surprised me and it took at least three fairly decent hits now the largest hit of that i forgot to press record on my dvr but i do have the other two and let me just tell you spoiler alert this thing exceeded my expectations in both flight feel and durability now what i thought would happen in a direct hard gate hit was that it would just plow right through this thing and destroy everything behind it and when i really hit that hard gate hit i was going towards the starting line we had the timing system up i wanted to get my best lap of the day so i really pushed it and i just didn't quite get over enough and hit the corner of the gate which is the worst possible place to hit and I immediately lost video and I thought, oh my gosh, this thing has just disintegrated. Uh, but when I went to find it, I was amazingly pleasantly surprised that there was no damage at all. Number 25, are you completely operational? 100% intact? Perfectly KO. I had actually just destroyed my battery strap. My battery went flying, but this quad was like unmarked. And what I realized was I did print this TPU camera holder that is available on Thingiverse. I believe it's a 45 or 50 degree camera angle. And if you look at the box frame, when you're flying flat, you're not going to hit this brace head on. You're gonna hit it at the tip and what's that going to do that's going to send your quad going immediately over and you'll hit the top plate second so you'll either hit the props because the props do come kind of close to there so you have multiple points of impact to distribute the force of that impact and that's why this thing actually held up very good so keep in mind i kept thinking it was going to go like this but i wasn't thinking straight guys it's going to go at an angle so you're going to hit the top and it's going to just cartwheel you safely <laughs> so make no mistake if i was going to race this uh competitively for a season i would add the additional bracing but i really wanted to get a test on it as is because i think that's how a lot of people are going to be building up and it did survive now, one, a couple of build notes. I suggest that you absolutely, even if you're not used to it, run props 
outward props reversed on this because of the box nature of this frame this is the most at risk for getting stuck in a tree because anything can act as a hanger for this frame so run your props outward so that when you do hit something um, the props will push you away rather than suck you in um, now, is that really a, a high risk of possibility for us racers that are probably going to be primarily flying this? Not as much, but as you see in the tracks that we fly um, here in Houston, a lot of times we incorporate very tall tree split S's into our tracks that are 25, 30 foot punch. Um, uh, there was not an SMA holder available on Thingiverse, so I designed this. If there's any interest, let me know. In fact, I'll probably just go ahead and upload this Thingiverse so you guys can get this. Um, so yeah, let's go over the build very quickly. Now, this was somewhat of a tricky build, but not as difficult as actually getting the frame together the first time. Um, and yes, I did sort of cheat. I transplanted um, a setup that I had built on the 533 Switchback over so it is the emax uh, mini magnum 2.1 along with these x nova 2207 6s motors the same ones that evan turner used to win the multi gp championship a uh, fox here predator i believe that's the predator 2 or 3 i can't remember luminar axi and 10 on the back and of course an fr sky xm plus uh, i wasn't sure where i would mount a crossfire antenna on here so i went ahead and just set it up for FR Sky. Now I did know that it came with a set of these um, camera mounts. I guess they're the same ones used on the Source 2. And you kind of peel them off. I peeled off a set right there. I really didn't want to go with that. So I looked on Thingiverse and found this 45 degree angle fixed camera mount, printed that out in a nice red TPU to match this perfectly. Um, if you're not printing yet, having a 3D printer for stuff like this is incredibly useful. Um, check out my 3D printing series for that. I could not find an SMA holder, so I modeled one up in Fusion 360 in about five minutes, and then it took about 15 or 20 minutes to print this out, and then boom, I was ready to roll. Um, so this was actually an enjoyable build to put together. I was thinking it was going to be a straight up transplant, but these uh, motors are a little bit further spaced. So I ended up having to make, um, I left this one bare so we could see some little motor extensions to be able to fit the actual ESC, but that's fine. Um, you can see the nice battery pad at the bottom. The center hole mounting is M2 20 by 20 and then M3 for the 30 by 30. Or since I'm going 20 by 20, I went with M2, which is the same as the Mini Magnum. And uh, there's not a ton of room, so I could not fit a um, Kevlar strap in there, but there's plenty of room to the top plate, so I could have used longer standoffs at the bottom. I just didn't think of that, but this should work pretty fine. So it's the Emax Mini Magnum 2.1, um, and it is the X Nova 2207, the V2 Lightning motors. This is very light, very powerful, and I believe they're like at 1800 kV. These are just 1700, 1800, somewhere in there. Outstanding motors. Um, then I'm running a Predator camera at the front with a 1.8 lens. Um, the worst thing about this this frame, this whole package, I will say, is there is a enormous amount of props in the view. A, a tremendous amount, an ungodly amount of props in your view as you're trying to fly. And that was really jarring at first. Eventually, I did kind of acclimate. And I actually put these neon yellow props on because... Um, I don't really like them, so I use them when I'm racing uh, just to kill them. And it's also a good test of just how much props you have in view. And that was one of the things that I thought was going to be an issue. Um, but it really puts the camera angle quite far forward in the build, which I do like, and very low to the prop line. So the feel is excellent. So how does it actually feel when you're flying, when you're racing? Well, it did as I expected really 
really allow you to get some very special cornering. When you're cornering those curves, those arcs, it is locked in. It feels like you're on rails. It is absolutely tremendous. If you are a car guy and you ever upgraded your suspension and you added stiffer shocks, stiffer springs, coilovers, sway bars, and the first couple of times you took a drive out and you noticed, oh my gosh, the handling is just locked in. That's how this feels. Now, some unanticipated uh, benefits that I also found were that the front and rear um, braces really kept it locked in on the pitch axis. I was really adjusting a little bit less than my normal builds uh, moving up and down. So these really do kind of lock you in. Um, so not just side to side on the turns, but also up and down. And I was talking to veteran racer and great track designer, Matt Max, about this frame. And he was also wondering, like I was, are the front and rear braces really necessary? Um, I do like them for a little protection, but these are so thin. Do they offer that much protection? Do they impact the feel at all? And I can say, I feel like they did. I feel like the sides give you locked in on the sides and the front and back give you locked in on the pitch axis so you can stay very low, very consistent. My lines uh, dipping up and down were very, very, uh, were, much, were, were far less than normal. Now, some things that I did not anticipate that I didn't necessarily like, um, I tend to on small curves, small turns, quick flip flop back and forth, like on a Matt's boobs or something like that obstacle, I tend to swing in. So if, if, if it's a large curve, this is beautiful. But if it's a fast curve where you're going, we had one turn where it was like split us into a gate and immediately turn sharp left and then immediately turn sharp right. And a lot of times those, I would sort of drift in sideways into those turns. The extra air resistance from the side was making those maneuvers a little bit tougher for me. The quick back and forth, and maybe that's just the way that I fly, um, it was something I would have to get used to. I wouldn't say it was terrible, but it is an adjustment and it's something that's a little bit different. I thought it was noteworthy. So what is the overall recommendation? I think it's a good option. I really kind of am surprised to say that, but for the money, I think it's a pretty good option. Um, I don't know if I would go with this if you're a freestyler. If you're a freestyler, stick with the Source One. If you're a racer and you want to try out the box frame um, design idea, there's no better price point than to do it here. It did survive some crashes. I think I would add the braces as I mentioned um, if you have a printer, you can print out these designs. One thing I did note is that taking it off the 533, moving it onto this frame, I actually did have to wire in some wire extensions all the way around. So the motor to center stack distance is slightly longer than some frames. That's really not a big deal because most people are not gonna be lazy just transferring a build over like I did. But this was such a great build to begin with. The little battery pad on the bottom worked beautifully the little anchor for your power lead worked beautifully um, i do note that not on this frame but on one of the other box frames i saw knee down or one of the top racers in another part of the country he was at the big race and he had a box frame and he was using the motor connection method of those little what is it, MT30s or whatever the three prong 30s that you can use to swap motors out just with a little plug that would kind of sit right here. It was beautiful. It was amazing. And I couldn't believe how fast he was swapping out a motor. And then I realized after getting this is that that type of system works perfect with this vertical arm. You can have those little MT30s or whatever the connector name is right there on the inside of the arm. It's so easy to swap a motor. But I don't really break that many motors. And if you look at the frame that I normally fly, the Mayday Quad Works Fusion, check out how much arm protection you have here. The arm protection on this box frame is very, very scant. It is very minimal. 
So on a frame like this, you are probably likely to break more motors, to bend more motor bells, just because of the lack of protection. There are a couple of TV, TPU, things they really protect the carbon more than the motor maybe somebody will design something that sticks out a little bit further to provide you a little bit of additional motor protection that's probably my biggest gripe which really isn't that bad um, i did know when i loaded this up on 3.57 that i normally fly there was a unbelievably hot motors something about the resonance of the frame was sort of feeling weird and so that's why when you get a new build up even if you're transferring something over always do a couple of hover tests first if i would have just sent it i would have burnt up everything so i did just a quick 10 15 second hover i noticed the motors were hot i tried a couple of tuning fixes those didn't work so what was the solution i put 4.2 on there default 4.2 the filters are good enough to where everything went away motors as cold as ice no more weird sounds sounds perfect so if you do have one of these frames i think because of all the ways that the carbon fits together you can transfer some vibrations around weirdly if you're getting hot motors try 4.2 defaults cold as ice what do you think guys are you moving to box frames what do you like about them if you're already flying box frames let me know in the comments what you have liked about them how long you've flown them what you have done with them are you going to be trying this and if you've already tried it are you switching over is anybody actually going to move their fleet over to this frame thanks guys